All right, what's up guys? This first video today is gonna be about breaking down cardio during prep. Um, how I typically view cardio, things to look out for, considerations to make, uh, individual responses from different athletes, and, and just generally how I go about it. So um, when I, my approach to cardio, typically speaking, is I usually have all my athletes on some cardio in the off season. That's just more so for general health, for heart health, um, just for a little bit of just get the body moving during the week and I keep that stable all throughout the off season. So when I add in cardio during prep, um, I'm either going to make a slight adjustment to that off the bat, or since I'm making an adjustment to food and possibly supplementation, I'm gonna leave the cardio where it's at, okay? Um, so typically most guys and girls that I'm working with, they're on anywhere from three to five sessions a week in the off season, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, and I just let them fit that into their day wherever they see fit. So it could be first thing in the morning, um, I personally think there's a lot of value to cardio first thing in the morning because it gets you in a regimented system throughout your day. And then also too, I think it breaks up the cardio and the training, which at least for me mentally, I enjoy. Um, for other people, like, you know, for me, when I get done with training, I just like to be done with training, go home, see my family, have a meal, you know, move on to the next task for the day, um, rather than get on a treadmill or a bike at that point. So that's, that's what I prefer, but I leave that open to them. Um, during prep, I definitely get more specific with the timing of cardio. Again, in, unless somebody has a really strenuous schedule, I prefer they do cardio first thing in the morning starting out. And then when additional cardio is added, it's first added to that morning session. When more cardio is needed, if needed, I add it in the, in the, in the evening. And again, my same thought process applies. So even when I add cardio in the evening, I typically when applicable, I like to keep it away from training. So I have somebody doing cardio first thing in the morning, I have them training in the afternoon, early evening, and then I have them doing one more cardio session uh, to end the night before their last meal. Now, I also don't want somebody traveling three hours a day to go to the back and forth to the gym. So if it makes sense to add that second cardio session in post-workout, I'm fine with that, okay? Um, so back to cardio, how I view it. I, I'm actually I'm a huge proponent of using the bike for cardio. The reason why is there's no eccentric component with the bike. And what I've noticed over time um, is the bike is gonna be my go-to method because I feel like it keeps your legs fuller and fresher and rounder during a prep. Um, now, there's gonna come to a point where to me, cardio is all about, at the end of the day, it's all about heart rate response and what response you're getting from that cardio, okay? So if the bike is working and you can do the bike literally all the way through prep, great. If it gets to a point where you're starting to get into those uh, stubborn fat loss areas where it might be your glutes or it might be your lower back and um, the, the rate at which you're you know, expending en energy on the cardio doing, uh, doing a bike isn't working, then let's change to something else, okay? So when I view cardio, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them on a set regimen in the morning, whether that be, so let's say 30 minutes, five times a week, okay? And then I'll say, let's do that on the bike, all right? And then when they update me again, let's say the following week or a few weeks later, and I'm needing to then change the plan to uh, induce more fat loss, I'm gonna look at the diet, I'm gonna look at the cardio. I might add a, a, more, a higher duration of cardio at that point. I might add more days of cardio at that point. And typically speaking, I'm gonna keep the mode of cardio and the intensity of cardio consistent for a long time during prep, all right? So let's stay on the bike. Uh, I, I usually give different level examples. So for example, uh, a life fitness bike, I think you can crank on you know, level eight, nine, 10 pretty easily. Um, a matrix bike, the, the resistance is harder. Um, so levels five to seven on a, resist, uh, on a matrix bike is more you know, where I think you need to be a pre-core bike. I think you can be more at level eight. I've used all these bikes. I've done tons of biking during prep. So I have a general idea of when I get on a certain machine, a certain brand, which level I need to be at on that machine. So the first thing is the level. The second thing that is a, is a constant variable for me that I like to keep track of is the RPMs. So how fast I'm spinning the, the revolutions per minute on the bike. Um, and I usually like to keep that regardless of the bike. So what kind of fluctuates for me is the intensity level of the bike itself due to the manufacturer. Um, but what, what I like to keep consistent is the RPMs on that bike. And I like to keep it at typically around 90 RPMs. Okay, so that's gonna be my set variable. Now, if it gets to a point where, let's say, if I still think the bike is working well, but yet I wanna get more out of the bike, 
I might tell somebody to take their RPMs from 90 uh, revolutions per minute to let's say 105 revolutions per minute, okay? So that's giving them an extra 15 revolutions per minute, which if, if you really think about it, that's a pretty good pace. Um, so that might be one change that I make. 